Hi guys, it's Lee. You know, you know exactly what's about to happen. I'm gonna teach you some stuff to make music a more delicious, amazing, sexy experience for you all. Today I'm gonna be teaching you some quick tips to improve on any instrument at all that you can possibly play. So first things first, you guys need to invest in a little thing called a metronome. And if you don't know what a metronome is, for those of you that are over the age of 20, you should remember those little wooden triangular looking things that are on pianos in like older movies and like back in the day and it had like a little silver stick that go That is a metronome. But today I didn't never have one of those. I wanted one because I thought it was cool, but I just use tempo light on my phone. Everyone has a smartphone, just get tempo light on your phone. And what that's gonna do for you is it's going to keep a very consistent, nice, precise speed for you so that you're not playing too, too slow or too fast because that's usually the issue that people have. If, you're, if you feel like you play well by yourself, but then when it's time to play in front of people or play with other people, you have a hard time, it's probably tempo related. You're, you get in your own world, your own zone, and then you just don't listen to what's going on around you. Having something go tick, tock, tick, tick, while you're playing is gonna allow you to use your peripheral hearing. I think that's like a real thing. If it's not, I feel very intelligent for saying it, but it's gonna help you to start utilizing your peripheral hearing so you're not just zoned into what you're doing and you're listening. On the same note of using the metronome, go on YouTube and look up four beat um, drum patterns. Just boom, just simple, um, very, very basic drum loops and stuff like that, and then play your music with it so you get used to hearing somebody else playing something while you are playing the main part. Just giving you the feel of what it means to communicate musically. That person's performance is always gonna be the same because it's recording, but it's teaching you how to interact with that loop that you're hearing. So it's kind of like a mock conversation. You gotta feel the rhythm with you. If you feel the rhythm with your body while you're playing, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. I personally end up doing kind of like a little rocking or like a little swaying motion while I'm playing. Breathe with your music. So before you start, you should think like five, six, seven. And you wanna like breathe out on your first note. You wanna breathe out on it. Like you're setting the tone, you're relaxing yourself, you're getting in the flow. And if you're playing in an orchestra or with other people, it's always one, two, and everyone breathes together on that first note so that you're all on the same page. You're all communicating with your body and your notes. Like music is not just the sound, it is your body as well. So that's another reason why breathing is important. Tip number, I don't know what number this is. I was gonna do a numerical order, but that's just not gonna happen. Next tip, um, do finger exercises. No one thinks about music as a sport or needing to be athletic except outside of marching band, I guess, but that is super duper important. Like, exercise your fingers. I like using a hand cruncher, get it nice and strong. So you can, well I suck at this one, but um, you could exercise each one of your fingers or you can just, you know, do the traditional route. You go to the gym, you go around on the treadmill, you take your hand off, you put your fingers on a treadmill, and you just let them. All right, show what you learned, buddy. Yes, train for this. We trained for this. Yeah, so you wanna work your fingers out, and what I always do for my piano students, you just one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, and you just go all the way up and down, then your thumb, back up to your pinky, and so on. So I do for my violin students, we go up, down, up, down, and they go da 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 over and over again. And um, I also do this exercise as well. Um, advanced musicians also do different variations of getting all those fingers work, especially your pinky. Your pinky's such a big little wimp. You gotta, you gotta slap them around a little bit and get them up to speed with everybody else. Very, very muy importante. 
Record yourself. If you can't record yourself, which I don't know why you wouldn't be able to now, but at least record yourself good audio of you playing. Preferably get some videos of you playing. If you get some videos, you'll be able to see what kind of weird body movements you're doing, what kind of weird facial shoulder stuff you're doing when you get to a spot that you're not comfortable with. You'll see all of that stuff so you can prep for it. Because even if you play a song perfectly, you're like, all right, I'm proud of myself. I promise you when you do the playback, you're gonna hear some stuff that you thought sounded way better than it did or you really thought the big moments sounded way more impactful than it did and it just sounded like nothing. So you need that outside perspective reflection on yourself. It will make you improve miles and beyond. So next I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it very slowly because I just don't understand Listen to what you are doing. Listen to what you're doing. You guys don't listen to what you're doing. I've never realized how much people don't listen to what they're doing until I started giving private lessons. You'll play the same thing over and over and over again, and then I'll be like, yeah, when you get to that ah, part, that's, that's wrong. And you're like, no, I, I played it right. Did you look? Did you listen to what you did? All right, I want you to play this part and then I want you to sing what you just played. Okay, play it while you sing it. But da da da, oh. Yeah, but in teaching private lessons, it just really taught me how much we gloss over things and just continue to not play it properly. Make sure you look at every single thing. And when I say every single thing, I literally mean if you're reading sheet music from the treble clef the time signature, the key signature, start from there. Make sure there's nothing there, there's no accent, there's no preambles, no, there's no asterisks, there's nothing there that you need to see before you keep playing. Make sure you're playing all your eighth notes as eighth notes. Make sure you're not playing a quarter note as a whole note or something crazy like that because people do that all the time. And if you're not reading sheet music, sing the music out loud. If you're learning by ear, Sing that song out loud and play it slowly while you're doing it. Not advanced enough to play while you sing. Sing the music slowly and then play it. Or sing little parts of it and then play it. But don't just, don't just blow through it. Like really listen to what you're playing. I promise you, if you actively listen to every single little thing in a song, if you're learning by ear, you look at every little thing in your music, you're gonna realize you're probably glossing over stuff that completely changes the feel or the context or the emotion that that section is supposed to give you. Back on the topic of breathing and everything else, pay attention to your body. For a lot of people, for violin and piano, that's what I teach. When you start feeling stress and tense, the shoulders go up and you start doing weird things with your arm because your shoulder is up. Bring your arm, your bow away from being straight on the bridge, it's supposed to be straight like this, now it's tilting this way and it's getting off of the strings. You're supposed to be playing piano, your shoulders are all the way up here, now your fingers can't stretch out and be nice and open across the keyboard like it needs to. That goes hand in hand with recording yourself. If you can see what you're doing, then you can prepare better for the next time you play stuff. And you'll probably clear up all those little, I don't know why every time I get this section, I just can't play it right. You're probably getting really tense because you're anticipating that section, doing something where that's stopping you from like, you know, just doing your thing. Good posture and no weird movements. If you're playing piano, I'm mostly gonna talk about piano and violin. You want nice, relaxed shoulders, like very relaxed arms. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm gonna put it up here, you know that's wrong. I'll stand. Nice, relaxed, loose shoulders. Um, think about the penny trick. I don't know if um, you guys know about that, but back in the day, people used to be like, oh, put a penny on your wrist, and if the pennies can stay up and not slide off, you know that your hand is in good shape. Playing violin, same thing. Nice straight posture. Don't bend your wrist this way, don't bend that way. Do not choke your violin. Nice open thumb webbing area here for the neck of the violin. Nice and relaxed shoulders all the way out, all the way in. Bend your wrist, do not bring your arm across 
the instrument. You are gonna do, be doing some things that are not natural to everyday movement as a human being when you're playing any instrument, but it should not be so awkward and tense where you end up crip walking with your body to play. It should be like, it should be wavy, it should be relaxed. Also, it's super important, learn rhythm. You have to learn rhythm. Even if you're learning by ear, you need to know one and two and three and four and. There's no way to get around it. You need to know rhythm. Even if you don't know what it looks like on paper, you need to know what eight notes sound like. One and two and three and four and. Chord notes, one, two, three, four. That's gonna allow you to play with how you want things to sound. Like when you know different rhythms, it gives you different ways to spice things up. More versatile, keeping your tempo. It's gonna really take you to that next level and it's gonna allow you to play things properly even if you're doing it by ear. If you know how to execute those different rhythms and how they go together. We'll be giving a video on that as well. Um, that'll be in my basic music theory video. I'll cover reading basic notes and just all the base level rhythms that you should know that will get you through like say 75, 80% of the music you need to know to maneuver the majority of the situations you will be in. And finally, learn how to read. Yes, even you that says, I don't wanna learn how to read, that's really hard. I'm not musically inclined like that. I just know how to noodle doodle, fanoodle around on the guitar a little bit. The great thing about learning how to read music is, if you just learn how to read just basic every good boy does fine in your kind of opera, I'm not gonna get into that. You guys are wondering what all this stuff means. If you want to know, tune in to the next video and I can teach you everything you need to know. That is why I'm here for you. If you just learn those two basic acronyms, every good boy does fine and your fat opera can eat, you can literally use deductive reasoning and context clues to figure out everything else. A lot of you guys that just love learning by ear and you thought, okay, so far so good, great, loving it. You're gonna be pissed because you're gonna feel like I just clickbaited you, but no, you should learn how to read too and you should learn how to count your rhythms as well. And I promise you, it is such an invaluable skill to have. You don't have to get all into everything else, get a private teacher or nothing, but if you know those two things, you guys can go into any room with trained musicians and hold your own for the most part. They're like, yeah, oh, like, he didn't go to music school or anything, but he actually knows what he's talking about. I mean, we said G sharp and he knew what we meant. Well, that'll give you the confidence you need. You won't feel like everything you're saying is gibberish. But at least you can actually start the conversation and do what you need to do, especially if you go and like, hey, I just noodle around a little bit. People will take that into consideration and they will keep you at a noodle level and you'll be able to like do your thing. And no, you do not need to be super musically inclined. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need to have this gift. Some people are gifted, yes, but you can learn how to do this the same way we all have to learn a little bit of science, math, English, and social studies, even if we're bad at one of those subjects. I want you guys to get out of that mentality. I want you guys to enjoy playing music, to enjoy art, and not feel this pressure to be this so want you do not have to be that especially during quarantine you guys are bored take out those instruments noodle around on your guitar whatever else buy a harp i don't know buy a didgeridoo and do your thing don't feel threatened do not feel intimidated take these tips learn from them i hope this was really helpful um yeah i mean i just want you guys to have fun enjoy yourself on your instrument yeah, so those are my quick tips and I will see you in...